She only wants to get it cleaned up because she's scared she's going to get in trouble. We're about to share some more court evidence with you. Don't worry, their side gets it in a right of discovery anyway. One way or another, they're going to see it all. And so are you. She tells Judge DeThomasis that we've called DHS on her multiple, multiple times. And yet, February 20th, if we look at the highlighted area down below, she's, she's scared. Somebody's going to call DHS. Uh, not somebody. Everybody ended up calling. Because we know that her own family members ended up calling on her. She says, I'm sorry to bug you, but did you know or could you find out if he was going to bring the trailer by? If not, I guess I'll have to try and figure out something else out. But I'm dedicated to getting my place cleaned up now. Because... Make sure you understand her reasoning. She doesn't want it clean for safety. She doesn't want it clean because that's better living for conditions for her, for the child. She only wants the place cleaned up because now I'm afraid somebody's going to turn me in to DHS. I want to keep working and get it cleaned up. You have to understand, Lynette has gone through a process of blaming multiple people for all the calls to DHS. She's gone through blaming her daughter, who she had illegally living in the shed, dedoxing. There's another addict on the property. She's blamed it on other addicts that she's had living on the property, which we're going to take a look at here in just a moment. She's blamed it on different residents of Otter Creek, and now she blames it all on what the hails and viewers of what the hails when she's here in february 20th nobody even knows who she is never seen her in a what the hails video and february 20th she's saying i'm afraid somebody's gonna turn me in to dhs i want to keep working and get it cleaned up she doesn't even have the right thought and philosophy and reasoning why to get it cleaned up she only wants to get it cleaned up because she's scared she's going to get in trouble. As a side note, there were residents of Otter Creek willing to, number one, let her use a trailer, and number two, haul all the garbage in the trailer. And then when the trailer was supposed to come, which is what she was asking about, and she was supposed to fill and work with these residents, she went, oh, just drop it off there. I'm not home. I'm not going to do it right now, which was scheduled well in advance. You have to understand this. So it was all scheduled. There were residents of Otter Creek going to help actually clean her property up with her. And then the individual who was driving the trailer said, this is an extremely expensive trailer. I'm not leaving it on your property. You have rug addicts coming in and out all the time, and I'm responsible if this thing gets stolen. So then she does not clean the property. Everything is literally gifted to her. All she has to do is just work with the residents and put garbage in the actual trailer. She refuses to even be present to do that. February 21st. Well, I've been panicking and I've been crying because she's terrified that DHS is going to come to my door and steal my kid. Now, why is she terrified? Because she's always a victim of somebody. I've already went through the list of people she has actually complained and, and stated these are the individuals that have called. So, we're not even on the list yet, okay? There's other people well before us. And the funny thing is, is in court, she tells the judge in one of the four hearings already, she's like, I have never had any problems before in my life at all, at all, never, ever which we have screenshots of her entire life in Northport and her entire life. She has nothing but problems. She airs her dirty laundry. She is the common denominator in the problems. Well, I've been panicking and crying for the last couple days, thinking that DHS is going to come to my door and steal my kid. Now, there's a reason why she's panicking and crying, why she's scared. It's because... We'll get to it, but it's because there were rug addicts living on her property and then they left and they told her because of the living conditions and the way she treats the child, they are going to report her. So she's scared to death right now that she's being reported by these rug addicts that she had living on the property. And I'm going to die because I can't live without her and she saved my life. Um, how many other children? Did you actually have? Could you imagine being one of Lynette's kids 
and reading this constant garbage or hearing this constant garbage where Lynette says, I prayed for 30 years. Or was it 35? 35. 35 years for God to give me this child. Uh, she's has quite a bit already. She's just <laughs> Remember, seven husbands, seven divorces. She has biological children and she has stepchildren. And could you imagine being one of those kids hearing your mom or stepmom constantly stating, I waited 35 years for a real child. The insanity that comes out of this woman's mouth. Okay, so she saved her life now. Um, wait, I thought she had an incredible life in Northport. Mm -hmm. Her life was incredible, paid off, beautiful condo. It was amazing. Her life was amazing. She left this amazing life. But it's the child that saved her life, the amazing life in Northport. Something's not adding up. Something's not adding up at all here. And I saved hers. And all I want to do is make this alone for her and me and make it clean. I just want to be a normal person and abnormal and and abnormal friends. You think I'm joking. This is what it says. And and abnormal friends. I'm um, surprised it doesn't say rug addict friends. Uh, and be normal. But I'm not normal. This is her words. I'm not normal. And I'll never fit in anywhere. And I guess I just need to deal with it. But I want to sit in the board. Oh, great. Here we go. Town council again. Oh, my goodness. Could you imagine? Imagine the complete and total entertainment of this woman sitting on the town council. If you thought Don the Con was good, if you thought Russ the Sus was the sauce, then, man, you ain't seen nothing until Lanette gets on the town council, which will never happen. Be very, very clear. Uh, the town residents want nothing to do with this woman or that man. And the town residents would never vote at all. They're seeing the insanity, the psychosis, the instability, instability, un in and stability. You you name it. You put anything in front of stability, and she's she's anything but stable. Okay. She's mentioned it before. She even ran for the okay. board. Okay. Uh, I just need to deal with it. I want to sit on the board. If I can get on, I think I can bring a lot. The man I just met from Gilcrest and Trenton, he's going to talk to me a lot about how they're getting their historical stuff done. He's doing something about the historical society. He wants to come help me build tortoise pens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wowzers. Okay. Uh, first of all, the individual never came out and built any tortoise pens. And uh, anybody who even goes by that property, the stench is so bad, they try and get away as fast as possible. Uh, not only is the stench so bad, the actual look of it is nothing but a dump. And if anybody just saw this property out of the blue, you would think you're going to be jumped. You're going to be think you're going to be mugged. Or if you're driving by, you might be yelled at, shouted at, and then somebody may be, Thankfully, he, um, he takes a lot of rugs and uh, he, he swallows a lot of rink. Um, and he couldn't hit the, the, <laughs> he, he was standing in front of his camper. I swear he couldn't hit it within five feet. That's how horrible it is. Anybody who has seen anything the way they are living, which is not acceptable standards anywhere. For someone who claims they want to be normal and they want to have normal friends and a normal life. All right, let's kind of explain what normal is. Normal, number one, is not meeting somebody for the very first time within the first 30 seconds stating that you want the man that you're living with to, uh, or that uh, he, you're a victim of him, or all the other garbage. You don't air out your dirty laundry, period. Not appropriate. You know when that is appropriate? You know when that is normal? When you actually have a trusting and a close relationship with somebody. Then you can come alongside and go, Hey, listen, listen, George, you have no idea what George does to me. You have no idea. Help! But I like it. And that's normal for me to like what George does to me and for George to like what I do to her. But it is not normal 
Apparently I'm getting in trouble right now, so I should probably just stop. Normal is living in a home, not in a shed illegally, which by the way, normal is following the laws. Normal is being in your 60s and going, you know what? Um, I am going to live off of my investments that I've made. Not, I'm going to try and find a disabled child, not go through an adoption agency because I know I would never ever get a child. I'm going to scam for the child and then I'm going to try and get money from the government for the child. That's not normal, trying to use a child to get money. Not normal at all. That's a scam. That's a con. Exploitation and, is a no-no. Oh, yeah. Exploitation of a child. That is not Sickening okay. Sickening in itself. Uh, that in its very own self. Ah, man, there should, be, there should be laws against what she's actually doing with that child. And that's not normal. It's not normal to go, oh, look at my beautiful outdoor shower that all the gray water goes uh, right into the ground, it's illegally the in Florida. Normal definitely isn't having a four-year-old that doesn't know their ABCs, one, two, threes, or it's po isn't potty trained yet. That's not normal. Of course, how are you going to potty train somebody when you don't really have a potty? Normal is not being proud of a bucket that you created to defecate in, in the exact same place where you're sleeping. That's not normal. That's not normal for anybody to be sitting right next to defecation and then claiming to the world, claiming to the world, this is not normal. I have a child and, it, and it's life threatening. And yet they're right next to a bucket of fecal matter. That's not normal. As a matter of fact, I've yet to see any normalcy come out of that individual or that individual's life. You know what else isn't normal? Creating a ton of Otter Creek Facebook pages so that you can make announcements to everybody. Now, keep in mind, it was Lynette and John Crook who made Otter Creek politics, okay? And then friends and family, which none of it was about politics or friends and family. It was all about attacking the residents of Otter Creek and towards the end, attacking George and I. Now, they claim they've actually deleted the accounts or those pages. That has not happened. What they did is they removed people, made it private, it still exists, we still see it, and yes, they're still liable for it. So let's look at this, February 26, all right? This is just a few days after the last text I shared with you. I just wanna make an announcement, okay? <laughs> not joking. Who in the world uses, <laughs> I could never imagine going, I just want to make an announcement on, on, on my Facebook page. I just want to make an announcement so that no one calls the sheriff. And I definitely wouldn't start an announcement like that. Are you seeing that nothing is normal? Nothing. I just want to make an announcement so no one calls the sheriff. I do have a couple staying with me that are helping me with the property. So they do belong. They have a green vehicle. So no worries. They are here for me. All right, well, the sheriff has been called on her well enough already. And you're about to learn about this couple who was on her property. This couple was homeless. And Lynette sees an opportunity. Well, if I give them rotten food, and if I give them a tent or a shed to sleep in instead of their vehicle, I can exchange that for labor. Because we all know she's not doing any of it, and neither is John. As we share this with you, keep in mind she's told the judge, there's never, ever been any rug addicts on my property. All right, a couple weeks later, April 12th, she posts in a local page, what's happening in Chiefland. She posts this. So I was just robbed by two people that I hired to help me on my property. Jess Montfort and her boyfriend, Jim Culbertston. They drive a green Ford Explorer. They've been answering ads all over Bronson, Williston, Chiefland. They just took all kinds of my belongings because, because what? Read the highlighted. I let them stay in my shed. They were homeless rug addicts and she puts them up in the shed in exchange for labor. Wait, okay, before I even finish this, hold a second. Doesn't she have a child who has a life-threatening disorder who can't be around people or strangers or anyone without masks? How does this 
ever happen? How the remember when the fish and wildlife officer Ken Holmes comes onto the property and says, "Oh, she can't be around you. She can't be around you." And then the child is all over the wildlife officer. It's all an act. It's all an act. It's all an act. I hope you realize it is all an act for money. It's a scam. It's a con for money. Because I let them stay in my shed. And as they left the day, they took a lot of my personal items with them. So beware. Just if they answer your ads, don't do it. Okay, well, marketing genius. Lynette, the marketing genius here. She took Nikes. Just do it. Shush. And now, for the turds uh, purgatory, it's just don't do it. Um, let's see, what would the logo be? It wouldn't be... Maybe it's, whoosh, ha, that's what it is. Upside down swoosh, X. whoosh, whoosh. It's just don't do it. Same day, same Facebook group. All of a sudden, Lynette notices, because she takes such good care of these animals, all of a sudden she realizes and notices that a giant tortoise is gone. Literally. Not only uh, does she post this, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this in a little bit, Again, it's attention, attention, attention. I've got an announcement. Attention. All right. Attention, attention. I'm looking for a stolen tortoise, a Sakala tortoise that was taken from my property yesterday by Jessica Munford. Oh, parentheses, Smith. Could you imagine if you had to use parentheses for Lynette? Oh, my goodness. Shouldn't she 39. be calling the sheriff instead of making announcements on Facebook? Well... I don't know. She is worried that DHS is coming. So that's true. Um, and by the way, she's blamed these two. These are two of the individuals that she blamed for all the DHS visits before she started blaming George and myself. Um, let's keep going here. Oh, she says she did call the sheriff. All right. So Smith and her boyfriend Jim in a green explorer. The sheriff has been called. Oh, okay. Do you feel better now, Good George? Good to know. Yeah. Okay. The sheriff has been called. And I bet the sheriff is like, oh my goodness, this. You know what? The sheriff are very professional and we appreciate them. So, um, And the tortoise was not, was not given and delivered to where they were supposed to deliver him. Oh my goodness. I thought she doesn't adopt them out. because Wait, she doesn't sell them. She doesn't adopt them. So it's obvious that she actually told these two to take this tortoise somewhere. She didn't. She didn't adopt it. She sold it. They sold him or gave him away for rugs. Right there in the highlighted. They sold him or gave him away for rugs. Man, I don't know how Otter Creek has so many floors that need this much carpet. But apparently, we ain't got enough floors for all the rugs that are going on right across the street from the ranch. Like we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to freaking rug the entire seventy acres, George, with all the rug dealing going on over That's there. That's a lot of vacuuming. Holy cow, man! We're gonna have to buy so many storage units with vacuums. I tell you what, every storage unit I see now with a vacuum, I will purchase it just so that we can keep people going on uh, the rug cleaning up. Okay? They sold him or they gave him away for rugs. Please, if anyone knows someone who just got a very large tortoise, please call the Levy County Sheriff. My name is. This is funny. Michelle Preston. No, her name isn't. It's Lynette. I am with It's a Shell Thing, Inc. No, it should be It's a Hell Thing, Inc. A nonprofit in Otter Creek. Please help me find the tortoise. Thank you. By the way, he is a male. He is huge, about 65 pounds. All there? All there? Oh, my goodness. She's such a good caretaker. She's such a good caretaker. Number one, she blames these two for taking the tortoise and selling it. As a matter of fact, she says they did not, they was not given and delivered to where they were supposed to deliver him. Okay. This is what she says in the post was not delivered to where they were supposed to deliver him. All right. So here's what you don't know from the post. She then goes on to contact all the surrounding residents in Otter Creek. Not only the surrounding residents of Otter Creek uh, near her, which remember, she told the judge, they are the only neighbors that I have. Okay? So she contacts all the neighbors surrounding, and we are not the only neighbors. And yes, she attempted with us as well. And then she even contacts the campground, which is nowhere near her at all. 
and says, can I come on the property and look for my tortoise? Now I can tell you that the surrounding neighbor said no, okay, because they've already shared with us, they said no. Or some of them might have said, eh, warily said, okay, um, you think you, you think you, you might notice a huge tortoise and it can't get that far away. Why in the world is she calling the campground? Uh, by the way, she wasn't allowed on the campground at that point. She had burned too many bridges and destroyed too many, too many people in this town already. Nobody wants her on their property. Nobody wants her around. And those are their feelings. And I understand those feelings because she is nothing but drama. And all, all people want in their life is peace. So we talk about normal and abnormal. All she does is create abnormal drama. All she creates is problems. Literally, the woman creates problem after problem after problem after problem. The woman creates so many problems for herself. The woman declares there are no moles. The woman goes on to give information, messages, and sound bites, and I mean, literally throwing herself under the bus and John under the bus. This is the same woman who ran to the courthouse to file another motion and another motion and another motion. And every time she wrote the name Jeremy Hales, she gave us another sample for forensic, the world-renowned forensic handwriting expert who is coming to court and who is going to declare that 100% Lynette Preston is the one that wrote signs declaring that I am the Ohio rapist. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a good rap. <laughs> I can break it down. You know the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Then she goes on one of her other Facebook pages. Okay? Yeah, you don't need to read it. I'm going to read it to you. And I don't want to promote her pages. So, uh, will the people that brought Ty to me, I'm guessing Ty is the tortoise. Mm-hmm. Oh, the tortoise tie. Yeah, tortoise tie. Tie tortoise. Uh, well, the people that brought tie to me, please contact me ASAP. He's been stolen and I need pictures of him. Oh my goodness, you got to be kidding me. All right, so. So which one is it? Is he stolen or is he missing uh, that she has to look in neighbor's well, yards? We know she was looking all over neighbor's yards. This is what happens when you when you buy rugs, kids. This is what happens when you buy rugs. Let me emphasize epoxy floors, tile floors, uh, linoleum floors. Just don't do rugs, kids. Don't do rugs. Uh, and he's been stolen and I need pictures of him. My phone crashed that had pictures of him. Please get a hold of me. Can you imagine being the individual? Number one, she's not even contacting personally the individual who she makes an announcement. gave Ty, all right? She's making a public announcement on a Facebook page that I don't feel like promoting at all. Um, all right, so I've, I've got a little bit of an issue there. If you're a rescue, shouldn't you have records of where this animal came from, who this animal came from, and the history of the animal, pictures of the, I mean, could you imagine? This is the same woman that wanted to be on town council. So this is the same woman that says she's been involved in politics and government. And Russ the sus said, "Well, I, I suggest, I suggest Miss Lynette Preston." All right, um, I suggest, <laughs> I suggest a whole lot of things that I can't say right now. But um, let's get back to it. So you're the individual that that donates and thinks this animal is gonna be cared for and rescued. Nope, now you're reading a public comment. Uh, can you please get a hold of me? She doesn't even know where the animal came from, has no pictures, no records of the animal whatsoever. And what you can't see is this woman is blaming everybody, blaming these two rug addicts that were on the property and saying they stole it and she's posting it all over Facebook about these two and yet here locally, she's contacting every resident saying, can I come through your property? Can I look for my for my tortoise? Um, oh yeah, same individual that has no electric, no heat, and the torts are dying. Oh, it gets juicier and better and, oh my goodness, longer with her stuff. It's crazy. Uh, she goes on to post, well guys, 
Where'd she post this? In one of her ridiculous One of her groups? multiple groups oh, or publicly on a Levy County I, group. I, I'm curious of whether she has one group per personality. I'm not sure, but it's just a theory I'm throwing out there. It, uh, it gives me a headache. Well, guys, the couple called CPS on me and turned me in for... I can't say this word on YouTube. Um, I mean, I could, but... You know, the reality is this. Every time we show stuff that involved these two, YouTube does not like it. And it's because it's not family friendly. And these two are not family friendly. They're not family and they're not friendly at all. It's their language and it's the content of, of what it's about. And you go, well, why would you put it on YouTube if YouTube doesn't like it and you have issues with it on YouTube? We put it there for accountability's sake. It's all about accountability. It has nothing to do with anything else except accountability. So that it will be there when we need to reference it, when others need to reference it, law enforcement, other agencies, it's all there. It doesn't go away. It's 100% aspect of accountability. So she says they turned me in for, uh, we'll just call it adult intimate abuse. Okay, we'll call it that. We'll call it adult intimate abuse, rug addiction, and God knows what else. I hired Jessica to help me organize and clean my camper and move everything into my shed where I let them stay. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, Judge DeThomasis, are you listening? Uh, Judge DeThomasis, are, are you are you reading? Judge, are you reading? Are you reading this? Are you hearing this? Uh, because I know it's going to take you weeks, if not months, to go over the thousands and thousands and thousands of screenshots and evidence. Oh, but but don't worry, don't worry. I'm not mad that that uh, you put a temporary injunction on me because you had to take her word as truth because that's the law. Uh, I thought the law was you're innocent until proven guilty. Well, go figure. Okay, let's keep going on. Um, so I let them stay. There's more rug addicts staying on the property. Did we count those the other day? Where were we at? Five? We're at six, seven? I don't know. We're at a good handful so far. That's not including both her and Crook as well. They both uh, have rug addiction problems. I mean, they love their rugs. Love their rugs. And um, let's keep going on. And you go, how do you know that? Well, she posted all. We have all the screenshots. We have, we have her, what was that? Uh, a UA? We have her UA test. Now that we know what a UA is. A UA. Uh, Oh, by the way, um, do you think it ironic that George and I don't know what a UA is, a UA, urine analysis test, that an individual would need if they're incarcerated or things along those lines, if they were being checked? Do you think it's ironic? George and I have no clue about this, but she's the ordained minister. She knows the terminology. She knows what to say. She knows what it is. And here I am, this innocent little northerner, has no clue. No clue. Ironic, isn't it? Ironic. She knows everything about it, but I know nothing about it, and I have to be educated about it by our viewers. All right, so I hired Jessica to help me organize and clean my camper and move everything in my shed where I let them stay. Thank God she didn't get to cleaning the shed or the camper, so she didn't do the work that she was hired for. By the way, keep in mind, there was no monetary uh, exchange this was housing exchange and rotten food exchange. All right. Uh, or she would have, th thank God she didn't get to cleaning the shed or the camper because she would have stolen all of it that was in there. But so I, I, I can't even understand this. They, they didn't do it. Then they turned me in because the work they didn't do wasn't done. And then she gave her... Then she gave her name Jessica. That was smart. And no, the worker... She's talking about DCF, right? Mm -hmm. Or whatever it's called here. DHS. We, DHS. We know it as CPS. We know it as CPS. Down here is D, D, DHS. DHS. All right. DHS. She's talking about a DHS worker now. How in the world... This is no joke. She goes through all of this mumble jumbo. All of it. It's just... I, I, there's no sense of it at all. And then you wonder why she had a seven-hour deposition with maybe, maybe 45 minutes of actual information. Okay. 
Um, so she's talking about the DHS worker. She says she gave her the name Jessica. That was was smart. And no, the worker didn't tell me, but a question was asked. And it let me know who did it. Plus, plus, we're not dumb. We knew it was coming. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So Crook and Lynette aren't dumb. Okay. We're not dumb. We knew it was coming. All right. So here's the ironic thing about this. She lets homeless rug addicts live on her property in exchange for work. According to her, no work is being done. And the homeless rug addicts realize that this place is so bad, they're calling children's services. Do you understand the level of badness that has to be for homeless rug addicts to be calling children's services? To, to literally leave the property. It's so disgusting. They're homeless and they're leaving the property and they're calling children's services. Do you get it yet? That's how bad this place is. That's how bad these people are. That homeless rug addicts don't even want to be there. Could you imagine being a tortoise named Ty? Okay. They're going down. This is her words. This sounds like a threat to me. I, I honestly think that Jessica should probably get an injunction. She should probably run to the courthouse and get an injunction. Because she posted publicly inciting hate. And there could all of these followers of Lynette could then go after Jessica. Which Crook posted on all of these posts as well. So Jeff, Jessica, if you're watching, according to Judge to Thomas, you can actually go after... You can go after Lynette and Crook because they actually have posted all of your information. They called you all of these things. And then if others have contacted you, you got them. Jessica, that's just a little freebie. That was a little legal advice that I saw given by a judge, even though it's illegal for the judge to give free legal advice to the petitioner who doesn't have a lawyer. But you know what? We're going to pay it forward. No charge. Okay? That was no charge. For, for Judge De Thomas's, They're going down. And I hope they're reading this because I'm not going to stop until they're in jail. No joke. No joke. I'm curious. I'm curious. Has she stopped? And are they in jail? And uh, the reality is... is We don't know yet. I, I, I guess it's ongoing. I guess she hasn't stopped yet. She hasn't stopped. Although she's got some bigger things to worry about right now. You know, like um, all those signs she put up everywhere. All the perjury, which is being turned into the DA. Um, he goes on and on. Uh, and Unless they bring my stuff back, including our tortoise. Okay, and then it goes on down here as well. There's, an, there's another one. After going through our entire shed that they people stayed in. Oh my goodness. I literally feel myself getting dumber reading what she writes. Like, my IQ drops every time I do this. I... You're not the only That's one. That's why I have to tune out in the court hearings. I literally just tune it out and focus on something else. Like, first of all, her voice gives me a tremendous headache, a huge headache. Um, and the ignorance that comes out of her mouth gives me a huge headache. Um, but I, I, are you with me? Like, do we, are we all getting dumber reading her stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay. After going through our entire shed that they people stayed in, even though she told Judge Thomas nobody's ever stayed on the property. No, no, there were no drug, there were no, no rug addicts. Nope, we didn't have any ruggies. Nope. Okay, well, you, you, you realize when I say something, I have everything to back it up and to prove it. Okay. The stolen so, camper. Um, after going through our entire shed, they people stayed in after going a lot through our personal storage shed on our property. We have found that they have stolen. Oh my God. Okay, all right. Now she's praying. She's ordained minister. Is she teaching? Maybe maybe she's preaching right now. Um, wait, hold a second. What was that commandment? Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Okay, well, let's keep going. Um, thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Okay, I, first, I don't believe that at all. Okay, I don't believe it. I don't believe they have even $1,000 worth of stuff of value on that property. But she says... Thousands of dollars worth of stuff, 
since they were here, and it's been leaving nightly. He's been putting things in his truck and leaving every night, and we couldn't figure out why he was leaving every night in the dark. Oh, I don't know. Maybe because he's a rug addict and living in your shed? Because he was loading something else into his truck and taking it wherever to trade for rugs. Or whatever. It's her saying it. Judge to Thomasus. We know you're watching. Remember when she told you? There were no rug addicts on our property ever, ever. Let them stay in our shed on our property. And they, for rugs. Um, can you say, I rest my case, Judge DeThomasis? I'm guessing he left every night to find a real toilet to go to the bathroom on. You want to know what Crook has to say about all this? Oh, he's, he's got plenty to say. He's got, the man can't keep his mouth shut. As a matter of fact, I can't wait for his deposition. And why Judge DeThomas has said it can't go any longer than three hours. And he's also said that my deposition can't go on any longer than three hours, which is kind of a, it's kind of sad. By the way, they did not want mine recorded and we have changed that within the court system. My deposition will be recorded and it will be shared on the channel. So you will get to see Silverman and you will get to see Lynette, hopefully. But um, we have changed that. It is going to be recorded. So Crook, he has to say this. This is an old picture of both of them. All right. This is still talking about the same rug addicts in the shed. This is an old picture of both of them. Rugs and strong drink are taking their toll. So they've aged. Well, it would take one to no one. Would it not? And then he goes on to say, these scumbags have called children and family services. Remember, everybody they have a problem with has called children and family services. These scumbags have called children and family services on this poor woman. Oh, the, the poor the poor woman that you that you that abuse. Means. The poor woman that in the middle of the road you tell her to suck your Oh, okay, that, that poor woman, right? We might as well be clear. We might as well be clear, okay. Um, so, let's see. Uh, the poor woman and her child, to try and get her in trouble, these scum buckets need to be turned into Levy County Sheriff. Please help find them. They sold a tent and could be camping, look at the bottom, camping by the river. Okay, well, that's a shame because... That's probably going to be the only thing that Crook has to his name after all of this was that tent so he could go live down by the river. Pot calling the kettle black? Wait, hold a second, hold a second. Crook never said he was black. That was Lynette who claimed she's black. April 22nd, 2023. Crook is talking to individuals in some of the local pages because Levy County Sheriff actually found a green vehicle with a stolen turtle. Can you believe it? There was a green vehicle with a stolen turtle, but it was not those two that were living in the shed or Ty the tortoise. And then a person called Kenny says, two different meth head couples in a green vehicle on a, with a stolen turtle, LMAO, can't make this it up. And then Karen replies, exactly. It's a meth head tortoise ring. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Levy County. Oh my goodness. Levy County, Otter Creek. Like, what are the odds? But I don't say that word more. I, I, just, I just need to, it needs to become more of my daily vocabulary. You should just roll off yeah, the tongue. Yeah, you should roll off the tongue like, ah, odd. And then Dara says, Oh my goodness, this whole story, which then John Crook replies, okay? Now, I want you to see this reply down here. This is pretty important. By the way, we're seeing all of this. We're seeing all of this, and we are realizing that this child is in complete and total danger. And so all of this is happening. By, by the way, there's more than... Um, uh, <laughs> there's plenty of reason to, to call children's services. I think we would all agree upon that. It's not as if we 
called children's services out of retaliation, out of, out of anger, out of, we've called children's services out of fear for somebody's life, all right? And so Crook goes on to say, they're meth addicts, they're thieves who rob disabled women and children. They need to go to jail. And he goes on to say, where Jim did 15 years and Jess did five years. See that right there? See that? Mm -hmm. Okay, hold a second. You know Jim did 15 years, you know Jess did five years, yet you let these individuals around a child. A child that we keep hearing has a life-threatening, whatever you want to call it, it's over and over again, life-threatening, life-threatening. Oh, well, I'm disabled. I'm a, she's life-threatening. He's life-threatening. The child's life-threatening. The tur tortoises are life-threatening. They all have some kind of life-threatening issue. And you're letting individuals that you know done 15 years, done five years, you're letting addicts in on your property, live on your property, eat your rotten food, food which then implicates when dixie which they were getting that food all legally as well. It just goes on and on and on in the cycle, in the circle. Who in their right mind, a normal person, what normal person wouldn't have called children's services? Brooke goes on to post in June, which in May, we sent them a cease and desist. All the garbage they were saying about these two, they were saying about other individuals in Otter Creek, and they started saying things about us as well. We sent a cease and desist. We're so sick and tired of it watching it for months and months and months and months and go on end and on end and on end. And by this point, I've already been, I don't know, I've had a, I've had a firearm brandished at me, you name it. Everything of him telling me that uh, my wife needs to learn how to, s well, there's a lot of derogatory things. And as I'm sure you can imagine, uh, I've been pushed to my limit. Uh, George and I both want it to be over and be done. And um, not only that, stalks, stalks me to my property Parks on my property, stalks me to my property. Toe Not to okay toe. with that. Not okay with that at all. He and threatened so, to go toe to toe with you, so maybe that's want, why he showed said up. he wanted to go toe to toe. Wanted to go toe to toe. Want, he would go toe to toe with me any day. But then, then touch his vehicle me, and see what goes bang. Stalks me to my property and then says, says, touch my vehicle, see what goes bang. Which, by the way, that was all used in court against them in Ohio and is being used against them in Florida. So it's pretty funny that any other individual would see such a thing and go, oh, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be in court. Of course it's going to be in court. We already used it. We used it in Ohio. He got a civil protection order on because we used it. That specific clip. All right, let's keep going on. Yesterday, they caught Jessica. Here we go. Yes, yesterday they caught Jessica. Uh, if she or her meth addict boyfriend, Jim Culberson, have ripped you off, this is your time to report her to Marion County Sheriff. Now we need to catch Jim. Oh, boy. This is crook going after the crooks now. Any irony in that? Uh, this is the individual that his paramour states is a rug dealer. That his paramour states is an abuser that his paramour states, man, we could go on and on and on and on and on and on, financially is a rapist of her, uh, paramour states all of these things, all of these things. And now now Crook wants to go after the Crooks. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. If these two rug dealers actually took this tortoise, thank you! You saved an animal from imminent death. You saved this animal. That's one more that got saved in this horrific system that they have across the street from us. Remember when I said he was leaving to use the bathroom? <sighs> Lynette has debunked me yet again. Debunked! Hashtag, here's what she has to say. She's talking about all of this on public Facebook postings. And she goes on to say, Emily, I have to throw away my coffee pot, my air fryer. I'm going to try and clean the microwave. But oh my God. <laughs> Ugh. What pigs. And she goes on to show this cup. Okay. I'll explain what that is. All right. So she goes on to show this cup and says, Emily, that is urine. One of three glasses of urine on top of my fridge.
I had already caught them peeing in one of my canisters and using my glass canister to throw pee outside. They had a bathroom less than five feet from the door of their shed. Well, the it would seem that um, they didn't know that was an outdoor bathroom because when Lynette was called out on that and gray water going all over Florida grounds, she said that was for the tortoises. It was for scrubbing tortoises. So how in the world, wait, wait, hold on a second. How in the world could there be a bathroom five feet from their shed, illegal leave, living, and if there was, gray matter is going all over the ground and black water. Uh, so now we have another issue there. This is very, very interesting. I'm sure zoning, our new zoning and, and permitting in Otter Creek would really like this screenshot. Uh, or, George, why wouldn't they have just used her customized toilet made out of a bucket with a funnel into a gain bottle for urine? The solids go to the bottom of the bucket and all the liquids go into the, the gain bottle. And then you can... Instead of dumping all that black water out on, or black black doo-doo out on, you, you just hit a nozzle and... Yeah, that's not okay in Florida either. And that's what she's doing. She's taking all of that urine and all of that fecal matter and she's putting it into the ground out here. You realize that's against the law. It's got to be treated. She's not treating it. And nor... Would they ever want to go on a bucket and smell your own stuff right next to you? I'd probably go on a bottle too and seal it so you don't have to smell it inside a shed. Do you have any idea how bad that would stink in the temperatures? We're talking June. We're talking upwards to 100 degrees, 90s, humidity, 100 degrees. Heat index is going to be even above that. The stench in itself is disgusting to even think about, yet alone live in it. Lynette goes on another rant right here about this whole situation. No, you know what's worse? I'm a 60-year-old woman disabled. I live on disability. I'm raising a three-year-old little girl that I adopted at birth who has a life-threatening disorder feeding tube and seizure disorder and Jessica and Jim knew that. She says it right there. Jessica and Jim knew that. That's funny if they knew of the disorder and she knew of the disorder, why would she bring these two around the child? Right? Ah, because it's all a lie. It's not life-threatening. It's balanced out with a diet. There's nothing life-threatening about it at all. All right. I can't even finish building my home, my house, because of everything that's happened since we moved here a year ago. They robbed us of what little we had. Here we go. Victimitis again. Insanity. Oh, let me tell you the reality of it, okay? Here's the reality of it. Nobody robbed her. They don't know how to manage money. Period. They beg. They don't work. They beg. They don't do jobs for a living. They beg. They don't do what a normal person does. Clock in, clock out. They try and get a child and exploit a child for money. That's not normal. It's completely and totally not normal. All right. Since we moved here a year ago and they robbed us of what little we had. That makes them even more monsters. And then they tell me as they're leaving how much they care about my little daughter when they stole her milk maker. She can't even have dairy. All right. Well, if you can't have dairy, then don't eat dairy. Pretty easy solution. Really, really easy. Okay. So I make almond milk, but they stole my milk maker. $265 almond cow milk maker. Almond milk. How many times do we got to type in almond milk maker in here? It's like four times in a row. Not a joke. It's in there that many times. I mean, they robbed me of our shampoo, conditioner. Really? Like, these two ever used any of that stuff in the first place. Toilet paper. Paper towels. All of my spices. Most of my canned goods. All of my food for my daughter who can't eat meat because she can't have protein. And there you have it. It's not a life-threatening disorder. It is nothing more than a dietary issue. Can't break down proteins. Therefore, you don't eat them. It's really easy, 
really simple. Now, can there be complications? Absolutely, there can be complications with anything in life, but it's really manageable and controllable. The life-threatening part is thrown in there so that people give her money. That's the scam. That's the con. That's the exploitation of the child. All right. Uh, she can't have protein. Everything that we had in our shed, all of my my towels, my dishes, they took everything. They left me with very little and it makes me sick. I can't replace it. I hope we find them so I can get my stuff back. Not that I want it back now. Wait. Which Hold a second. One is it? I hope we find them. I hope I get my stuff back. Not that I want it back now. This is going back. This is taking me back to my mother died. My mother didn't die. I want my stuff back. I don't want my stuff back. Oh my goodness. I want to forgive them because God tells me to, but it's hard not to hate them. Ugh. <laughs> In another Levy County group, Ronson Word of Mouth, she writes the longest freaking thing in the world. And I will try and read it, but I don't understand her language. But there's some funny stuff in there. All right. And just so you can understand that it is her up top, Lynette Preston. All right. April 12th. These two are still hurting people. If you see them, please call the sheriff. As there are now several people pressing charges on them for theft. That's interesting. I wonder how she knows that. So I was just robbed by these two people that I hired to help me on my property. Jess Montfort Smith and her boyfriend Jim Colbertson. They drive a green Ford Explorer. They've been answering ads all over Bronson, Wilson, Chiefland. She obviously copied what she posted before, but there's some funny stuff in here. Okay. They just took all kinds of things that I let them stay in my shed. Oh, and there we go again. Another omission of staying in a shed when she told the judge nobody's been on her property. Uh, as they left today, they took a lot of my personal items with them. So be aware, just Mumford and her boyfriend, Jim Culberson, drive a green Ford Explorer. If they answer in your ads, just don't do it. Man, that is good marketing. It was worse than we even thought. Once we looked at everything, I hired them to clean my property. Well, they've been cleaning it all of my daughter's clothes are all gone. All of my clothes, they were in totes and clothes and kinds of cubby totes. We'll get to the funny stuff. I know this is difficult because none of it makes sense. Um, and they're gone. And the totes are all gone. For all of our donation boxes, all gone. All the money that was in them and all of the decorations, all of the crafting that I was doing to them is all gone. Our big, beautiful tent that was... Why is everything in her life beautiful? I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get I have not seen one beautiful thing in her possession or life. Nothing. All right. But let me keep going. Our big, beautiful tent that was in our other shed where the washer and dryer is. By the way, their washer and dryer is in a shed and it's dumping out water, gray matter, gray water, illegally here in Florida. Uh, so there, there's more admission right there. And the washer and dryer is gone. They robbed me blind. They had left three glasses of pee on... This is where it gets good. They had left three glasses of pee on top of the refrigerator. We're giving it to the police so they can DNA it. <laughs> this is... This is crazy. They're giving pee, cups of pee, to the local county sheriff to try and get DNA samples. Can you get DNA from urine? I you can get an AUA. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can get an AUA. Okay, this is no joke. We we are giving it to the police so they can DNA them. You guys all think I'm joking. This is no joke. DNA them right there. We're giving it to the police so they can DNA them. Um, I'm not sure the police would need to take the P to DNA them if. She's already admitted that she had them living in the shed. Oh my goodness. The the complete and total ignorance. And if they already knew, they did time in prison. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're the ones that let them on the property. Around a child with a life-threatening disorder. This is grand theft because it's over $5,000. This would be a felony. They stole my eight-man tent. It's blue and a white bag and a blue tent with white trim. That's the tent that she was planning on living on on the property with the child. Mm -hmm. That was the original the original plan. She even put out a GoFundMe for it. And there's a, there's a post that that specific tent is larger than her camper. It 
I, it might be. It very well might be. All right, white bag, blue tent with white trim. It has a little door for air conditioner. It has LED lights in the top of the tent. They took it all. My LaRue leggings. What a... Ah! Ah, $350 worth, probably 30 pairs of one size fits all. They took all of our pots. I'll bet they got that Mary Jane. They took all of our pots and our pans. They took our shampoo, our conditioner, our toilet paper, our cooking utensils. I mean, they took food, lots of food, right out from underneath my baby who has a light. Instead of life, she typed a light this time. Has a light threatening metabolic disorder. So we're saving salmon. I don't get it. Oh my goodness, I don't get it. This poor child. So we're saving salmon. Just in case there was another formula shortage, she cannot break down protein or have lysine or typropan. And salmon is one of the very, very few food items I could feed her in an emergency. They took it all but three cans, knowing it was for her. They took all of her clothing, all of my clothing. They threw it they threw away obvious bags and bags of stuff. Oh, let me guess. Now it's going to be these two dumped all the garbage on Dead Dog Road. All the diapers, right? Rich, remember, also, Lynette has stated that her child doesn't wear diapers. Therefore, those could not be her diapers on Dead Dog Road. And yet, we see time and time again, in court, she has to go change the, the child's diaper. More lies. Lies upon lies upon lies. Threw all of my clothing away. Threw away obvious bags and bags of stuff. They took them off the property, sold them. I mean, these people wiped us out. I don't even know what to say. I had little silver elephants that matched my other elephants. They took the small ones. They left the big ones. Knickknacks. I mean, they have taken all of our belongings. <laughs> this is just insanity. I can't. I can't. They went through my personal shed. I do not know what missing totally out of the shed until we empty it. I don't know. I see totes open all the way in the back of the shed. They have to crawl on top of everything because it's a freaking mess. It's a dump. I guarantee you there was nothing of value taken. All right, There was no way $5,000, no way of felony. There's nothing these two own that would be worth anything anywhere near that amount. Uh, in the back of the shed, they had to crawl on top of everything to get to the back corner of the shed and open my totes. They also stole a 60-pound African spur-side tortoise. Also, uh, no, now, now it's two. A cicada tortoise. He was taken from our property under the guise that they were delivering him for me to a lady in Bronson. He never made it. They stole him and sold him and traded him for rugs. So please be on the lookout for someone who last Tuesday or the Tuesday before now, I'm not sure... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. My mom died. My mom didn't die. I'm not sure. Tuesday. Tuesday before. I'm not sure. It's not how my brain works. I I have a medical condition that my brain cannot think of things. That's pretty much the way the deposition went. Um, look out for someone who last Tuesday or the Tuesday before now, I'm not sure, ended up with a new tortoise, a big tortoise, and his name is Ty. Yeah, so if you see anybody with a tortoise, make sure you walk up to that tortoise and go, Is your name Ty? Yo, you're the stolen tortoise! Your name is Ty! Because all tortoises in her world, they all know their name. We're going to transition things a little bit because now comes the accusations that I called CPS, which I did not call CPS until well after this. With all of this mounting up and seeing and experiencing all of this, there is no doubt in my mind or anybody else's mind in Otter Creek that this child was endangered, is being neglected, and potentially even abused. And so she goes on to say, we'll get to it here. Oh, and side note, anyone on her property that she invites in apparently is not an endangerment to the child, but um, somehow, some way, I endanger the child. I don't get that either. All right, so she goes on to say, except the things that they have done to some people could have resulted in a lot of very traumatic things like turning me in three times to CPS knowing that I never hurt my child when they knew that my child had a life-threatening metabolic disorder and bringing people to my home could have gotten her sick, which indeed could have killed her. 
and much more destroying my tortoise rescue, doing all the things that they're doing to the people is just wrong. She's talking about George and I, okay? So number one, she's saying that now it wasn't it wasn't Jim and Jessica that contacted CPS. Or and, her biological daughters. And before that, it was her biological daughters that then were she on the property living other, in the shed. Then she accused other she's residents. She accused other residents of Otter Creek. And then it went to, all right, now my focus is Jeremy and George. So she's saying that we called CPS three times. Now, we happen to know one individual and it was the child's biological aunt because they contacted us and they shared with us when they saw her postings on Facebook, they immediately contacted children's services. It's very concerning. It's beyond concerning what this woman posts and it's beyond concerning what this woman continues to say and do in her life. And so number one, she's saying that it was us calling three times. And so we've never called three times. I personally have called once for the child. I personally called a second time for elder abuse what she claims Crook does to her, and that they really didn't follow up on that, uh, which is a shame because if it's true what she's saying, something should be done. And if it's not true what she's saying, something should be done to her for falsely accusing. All right, so then she goes on to say that uh, I never hurt my child, which the entire town of Otter Creek has seen her hit the child in the head multiple times. In multiple events, occasions, whether it be a town hall meeting, whether it be a meet and greet, it goes on and on. And then she goes on to say, my child has a life-threatening metabolic disorder and bringing people to my home could have gotten her sick, which could have killed her. I have no idea what she's talking about. I never brought anybody to her home at all and never will. I don't want to be at that property. I seriously doubt any normal person would ever want to be to that property. But here's the crazy part. She can bring anybody she wants on that property, and they're all rug dealers. Every rug dealer going in and out on that property, and there's not a problem that her child has a life-threatening metabolic uh, disorder, and it could have killed her with her bringing people in on that property. But now all of a sudden, me and George somehow are bringing people on the property, and we could have killed the child. Mm. Makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. So as long as she's okay with... Her inviting that person. Oh, you did 15 years? Okay. Oh, You're an yeah. addict? Come on yes, in. Come You're an in. addict? Please, please, please. Here's my shed. Uh, you did five years? Oh, you, you sell you sell rugs? Oh, I love rugs. Oh, and you like to pee in, in glasses and bottles? Yeah. Come on in. Oh, we'll give that urine to the police later for DNA. <laughs> uh, there's something so wrong with this. It, it is literally no, no... There's no rhyme or reason to it. Uh, it's it's complete and total insanity. And that's, I don't know what else to call it. Uh, or we could call it what she calls it. She's not normal. So what happened with Jim and Jessica? Well, Lynette's going to let us know. Because there's nothing sacred with this woman. She says they are both in jail, but they're not charged for stealing my tortoise. Because I hired them. I paid them. But I made the mistake of allowing them to sleep a couple nights in my shed. Therefore, the police said that my property belonged to them. That's the deputies in our town decided that it was the case. It is not the law, but that's what they decided. They got away with stealing him. She made her home their residency. Therefore, anything that's in her home is legally theirs as well. And it wasn't for a couple nights. It was for a few weeks. We saw them daily there. She's a pathological liar and she's putting this child at risk every single day.